Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be answering another one of your questions from Quora.com. And the question is, what is the fastest way to learn HTML, CSS, and jQuery in less than one month? So in this episode, I'm going to give you some big picture advice about how you should just approach self-learning in general in order to learn whatever it is you need to learn in the quickest way possible. And then I'm going to dive into some step-by-step things that you can do in order to learn those languages as quickly as possible and hopefully in less than a month. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers Course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so what is the fastest way to learn HTML, CSS, and jQuery? Well, real quickly, let me give you some big picture advice about self-learning in general. So there's three things that I think you can do to really speed up whatever it is that you're learning, but in this particular case, HTML, CSS, and jQuery. The first thing is to have something real to build, whether that's a website, an application, maybe an item for your portfolio, whatever it is, have something real to build. And the reason why that's important is because the if you just go online and read tutorials and go through courses and so forth, what you learn isn't really going to stick. And you're not really going to know the most important part, which is how to apply and implement all of those things that you learn. But when you build something real, then you get all of that experience actually implementing the the education and the knowledge, and you get a feel for how to implement those things inside of a real-world application. So what I would do is I would pick probably four or five different things that I want to build over the course of the next month, pick things that I could build in about a week, and I would lay those out in front of me as my plan for Not necessarily you need those things, that you're going to use those things, but those are things that are real world applications that that you can use to teach yourself and you can actually build real things while you learn. So have something real to build. Second is take courses. So if you only have a very short amount of time to learn this, then you really don't have a lot of time to spend scouring all over the internet and YouTube trying to find good tutorials. And... That's what I find a lot of coders do is they don't really want to spend any money or don't, you know, they want to uh, stick to YouTube and Google and so forth for tutorials. But if you're in a really short amount of time, you're probably going to have to skip that. You're probably going to have to spend a little bit of money to find a course that's been professionally put together by a teacher who, uh, you know, is getting paid to do it. So that they're... <laughs> They have a lot more invested in making sure the course is put together well and so forth. So what probably one of the biggest things that slows coders down is all the time they take researching and actually finding good tutorials. So don't be afraid to spend a little money to take some courses that are put together professionally because you'll just, you're just going to learn a lot faster that way. And a lot of times if you're paying for a course, you're going to get instructor support. So If you have questions, which you likely will, you can actually get answers from the person who taught the course, as opposed to if you're accessing a free tutorial, it's a crapshoot. You may or may not, and really, you can't really blame those people because 
they're not really getting paid to do that. They probably have other jobs or other things that they're doing. So their primary job isn't providing instructor support. Their primary job is probably something else. So again, a paid course has a lot of advantages. So don't be afraid to take a few paid courses if you have to, or if you can find some really good free ones, of course, you can take those as well. Third, find a mentor. I find that almost nobody in the developer community does this that I ever see is to find an actual coder who already knows what you know and to ask them to be your mentor. And I avoided this for a lot of years too. I was really stubborn. I was as stubborn as anybody about it. And then I found myself in a position where I had a mentor I didn't really have a choice about. And it was actually really awesome to have someone that I could go to who had a vested interest in me being successful and I could ask questions and he could teach me things that I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't even know I needed to learn. So find a mentor. So again, the three things big picture wise are have something real to build, take courses and find a mentor. Now specifically with HTML, CSS and jQuery, then there are a few kind of steps that I would go through or things that you can learn and, and courses that you can go through in order to teach yourself this stuff. The first thing that we'll want to cover is just some tools that you want. You may already have some of these, but they're very, very basic. I recommend installing Google Chrome. You could do all of this in Firefox too if you wanted. I don't use Firefox to develop. I use Chrome, so I'm going to tell you what I, I use. But I, again, most of this stuff should be available in Firefox. So the in Chrome Inspector, Firefox I know has this. You want to get very familiar with it and it, it maybe even look up a tutorial on using the inspector and it's going to allow you to look at your actual code on the website so you can look at the elements of your HTML. You can look at the CSS and, and probably the biggest one or a big one is that inside of the console tab in the inspector, you'll be able to see any JavaScript and jQuery errors and so forth. So that's going to help you a ton with debugging and you can use it when you're doing jQuery. You can use it for logging output so you can see what's happening inside your application and so forth. So Chrome Inspector is a really good one. I have the eyedropper tool. So it's just really good for finding colors, seeing what the color of something is. If you like a color on the web, you can take a look and see what it is. Uh, so you can use the eyedropper tool for that. The ruler tool. So for it allows you to uh, see measure the different sizes of of elements on your web page. So you know if you having a layout issue or you see a certain layout that you like and you want to see what it how big it is and so forth, then you can do all that with the ruler tool. And then finally, the window resizer. The window resizer has a list of preset common screen device sizes that you can go through so that you can look at your device on all those different sizes and get an idea of how responsive it is and how it looks on, on all those different screen sizes. So window resizer is another good one. All right, so next would be some sort of development environment. So there's a number of different integrated development environments out there like NetBeans, Eclipse, and PHP Storm, which are all good ones. But at the end of the day, what you need is some sort of local host, local emulator so that you can run your web pages locally as if they were on the web. So you get a real view of what they're actually going to look like. It's not as big of a deal with HTML, CSS, and jQuery, but it's still, it's still pretty handy to have that available. And then, of course, if you get into any back-end development with PHP or anything, you'll definitely need it. So... You can use ZAMP and WAMP server for the local host. You could get your own little text editor like Atom or Sublime Text or Notepad++. But the IDEs kind of have it all integrated into it. So those are some things that you want to look at uh, in regards to your development environment. Next, in terms of learning HTML and CSS, the course kind of pattern that I would go through for learning it I would start over on Codecademy. Codecademy has an actual HTML and CSS course. It's an estimated seven hour course and has over 4.5 million students. And it's a free course over there. So that's where I would start. Head over to Codecademy, go through their free course over there and 
kind of get your feet wet with HTML and CSS. Next, I'll give you one shameless plug because I don't want to overly promote myself. <laughs> I have an HTML and CSS course here on uh, on John Morris, my YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash John Morris video. And that just walks you through building. It, it teaches you HTML and CSS, but also sh shows you how to build an actual website template. So that that again, that's available on my YouTube channel. And that's what I would do next. And then once you're done with that, there is a really great course over on Udemy called Build Websites from Scratch with HTML and CSS. And I'll link to all of this stuff in the description of this video so that you can find all of the different links. But that really takes you from a beginner to an advanced level with HTML and CSS. So it's not, uh, it's not, it, it starts the beginner level, but it's really going to get into some more advanced stuff and go beyond what the other two courses are. So you, you can get your feet with the other two. And once you're comfortable with it and you want to go advanced mode, you can go with that, with that course over on Udemy. As far as learning jQuery, then the best place to start is probably the actual jQuery Learning Center on learn.jquery.com. And there's a number of tutorials and documentation and so forth over there that you can go through and learn jQuery from jQuery, the jQuery people. And that's going to help you just understand. I know for me, when I was learning jQuery, just understanding what it, what it actually does and what it is. And that's going to help you to, to do that. Next is the J2 query tutorial for beginners. This is a YouTube playlist from the channel learncode.academy. And there, I think there's about 10 different videos in there that walk you through some of the main things of learning jQuery. So this is going to take you from a basic understanding of what it is and how it works into actually writing real code and building real things with jQuery. So again, I'll link to that in the description of this video. And then finally for jQuery, there's another course over on Udemy called Learn JavaScript and jQuery, which again is is an advanced treatment of those topics. So you can get your feet wet with the other two, and then when you're ready for a more advanced course and, and to really kind of hone your chops, then you can go to that course over on Udemy. All right, so th those are the steps that I would go through all the while everything that you're learning building something real, building some real applications, building some real websites, forms, slider, pop-ups, whatever it is. Pick a number of different things that you actually want to build and build those out as you learn. You'll just learn, you'll remember more and you'll learn a lot faster. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. If you have a question for me, you can ask me over on Cora.com. You can head to johnmorrisonline.com slash Cora. That'll take you to my profile and you can invite me to answer your question. You can tweet me at JP Morris on Twitter or you can message me on Facebook, facebook.com slash John Morris online and I'll try to get those questions on the show. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so I know this is the content you're after. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that so that you get access to all the future episodes and tutorials. And if you haven't yet, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com and download my free seven strategies to turn your code into cash cheat sheet, where I'm going to show you how to monetize your newly learned coding skills. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.